Hey, Joe. Hey, buddy. What's going on? Oh, just thinking about spanking my kid. Yeah, I'm thinking about spanking you. Bring it on. <laughs> hey, man, you, you getting ready for your uh, semifinal matchup? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited. Your opponent's intense. He's an intense dude. I know. I give, I give a lot of respect for him. Oh, he's, you know... He's a high level debater. Don't let him fool you. Don't let don't let him pretend like he's just a normal guy on the street. He's uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I can tell. All right. Anyway, so we'll launch right in here. The topic of our discussion is children should not be spanked. Um, so to me, uh, one of the most sacred charges of a person is the care of another human being. Uh, whether you you're their parent or, or whether you're you're their guardian. As such, it's the onus of the person uh, to make the most informed and well-reasoned decisions about uh, child rearing as possible, right? We, we see this in, I guess, other facets of life. If you want to be a great farmer, you should learn a lot about farming. If you want to be a great parent, you should uh, learn about what, what uh, science demonstrates uh, to make for effective parenting. Uh, to, to that end, um, there is a robust uh, field of study um, that uh, examines the question of spanking, whether children should be spanked or not. Uh, to my mind, to my knowledge, it's overwhelming that uh, spanking in the long term and in the short term it is not effective and is therefore abusive and should be avoided. I'm going to throw a couple of... Uh, couple of snippets here. So we have a, a meta-analysis of 75 published studies from researcher Elizabeth Gershoff and Andrew Grogan Kaler from the University of Texas. Um, so again, I'm not citing studies, I'm citing meta-studies. So they evaluated 75 published studies on the relationship between spanking by parents and behavioral and various behavioral, emotional, and cognitive physical outcomes amongst children. Uh, they found that uh, spanking was associated with 13 out of a total of 17 negative outcomes that they assessed, including aggression, behavioral and mental health problems, uh, and reduced cognitive ability and self-esteem. Um, this meta-study, this, this looked at 160,000 uh, participants, and uh, it, it was over a time period of 50 years. Um, let me see here. Pull it no. up another source. No, uh, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll say I'll say I'll say other research I got. Go ahead. Okay, so I just I just want to briefly talk about that study. I actually I've actually read it. I went through it. I've, I've gone through the math. Um, so what it isn't is a study that tracks children for fifty years. It's not a longitudinal study. So what it does is is it checks out relevant literature on the subject over the past fifty years. Now. One of the things you have to realize in this study, if you go to the uh, appendix, uh, the number and percent of studies excluded from the meta-analysis by the exclusion code, there's 1,499 studies excluded from this, right? Uh, secondly, the, the, the thing about the study is that some of the, 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 the math portion, which... I guess some people here know, but uh, metrics is kind of my uh, go-to sport. Um, so you're, you use what's called a Cohen's D analysis, right? So it's Cohen's D is equal to the mean treatment minus the mean comparison over the standard deviation pool. And the standard, standard deviation pool was calculated as uh, the, the under the radical N of N sub 1 minus 1 times standard deviation of one to two plus n n sub two minus one times standard deviation two over two all over n n sub one n sub two minus two right uh the the, the thing about it is is it, it, that's an ANOVA right that's an ANOVA test for those who do metrics that's not a really powerful metric to use it's not something i would typically use uh i had a i had a person of mine that i was working on editing a paper for they'd run an anova for gdp and it it was not strong enough to give 
me good reason to believe that I could follow that that study and agree with what it is. Now, I'm not saying that this study is inherently bad. Uh, obviously, it passed peer review, but I, I do think that, one, the metrics in it are, are not as strong as people may think. Two, a lot of the studies that they used, if, if you actually look at them, uh, they, they held a lot of they held a lot of problems within those studies and that meta-analysis does not control for problems in that study unless it excludes them. But we already seen that they excluded 1500 pieces of literature already. So you have to ask yourself, is this confirming a bias when it comes to this paper? And that's one of the reasons why when it comes to these meta-analysis, you have to real, you have to get down grit, and, and fight through and read these papers because they're not always as exact as people would like to say. And it's not something I would consider a, a, a hard, a hard science here being used to kind of make a, a solid statement. All right. Fair enough. Um, I have uh, a bit more research I can throw out there, but uh, first off, I'm not going to pretend that I, I knew what the hell you were talking about. I will say that the study passed a uh, peer review process um, which is good enough for me, uh, to be frank, as somebody that is not in the field of psychology, uh, and it is published in a, in a, a major journal. Um, I'd be curious to see what other uh, statisticians thought about this, but hey, you threw out big words, so I appreciate that. But let's get let's get uh, kind of into the uh, into the principles of it, if you will. So, I, I mean, I think we can agree that um, if it's Gosh, I forget who I'm talking to. <laughs> All right, <laughs> if it's a if it's a husband hitting a wife, is that abusive? Yes. Mm -hmm. How come? Well, for one, there's no moral equivalence between a man hitting a woman uh, based on size, right? So, but I, I will say that I think you're trying to box me in here. So, if if I haul off and slap my girlfriend because she said something rowdy to me, that is an absolute no-go, right? But if we as two consenting adults have built a relationship, this is not unlike BDSM and things of that nature, that if she does something that is a punishable act, she is to get punished, then, then there is there's all the consent in the world to do that. But that is not the same as disciplining a child through the action of... I guess you could say physical. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I suppose we should de define our terms a little bit here. So uh, children, let's call them uh, under the age of, I don't know, some sort of. 13. Uh, yeah, 13. That's that's good for me. Uh, uh, the ability to, to, to make decisions or, or to rationalize. And then spank. We're talking about open handed slaps to, to the rear end. Yeah. Yeah. OK. All right. So. I guess I'm just trying to, 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 to find the point of divergence from where some acts of striking a person is not, it is abusive, but yet spanking is not abusive. And it seems to me that it comes down to purely consequentialism. It's, it's an argument from consequence. So because it serves some greater purpose, it's not, it's not abusive. Sure. You, we'll go with that. Yeah. I'll go with that. Um, yeah. Um, so therefore, if it was to be demonstrated that over the long term and, and even in the short term, spanking is not effective, it would be right to deduce that it, it, it is abusive. I wouldn't say abusive. I would say it would, uh, at best, it would be useless. At worst, well, you could say, at worst, you could say abusive. At best, we would have to assume useless because you, you, the, the, the burden of proof for Proving that it has long-term detrimental effects, I find uh, a rather odd because there is no true longitudinal study. And the only one that's ever been done, uh, Stephen Levitt was a part of it, found that there is absolutely no difference between a child's uh, income ratio as they grow older. Uh, I, I can't remember the study right off the top of my head, but he did a longitudinal study. And what it said is, is like the only factor that basically goes into whether a child does better, you know, they did the how many books are in the household study uh, and all of those went in. And what they found is that there was no correlation between spanking and a child uh, growing up to make more money and vice versa. So there's there's no consequence when we 
we think of it in that manner. So I would say it's useless if you could prove to me that there is psychological damage rather than monetary or economic damage, then I could say it's possibly abuse. But as of right now, it stands, it's useless. But certainly as, as parents, we are not just training our kids to maximize their, their capital production. Like the, we're, you know, we're, we're not just trying to teach kids to make the most amount of, at least I'm not, I don't know, maybe some other people are, are different, but it seems like at least normatively speaking that there are other, other things that we're trying to uh, equip our children with the ability to, to interact well socially, for example, uh, self-esteem or, or, or as you see it, is it, our role as parents is just to try to kind of cha- train up our child to, to maximize their, their capital generation. Uh, I mean, your main goal is to do that is to, is to bring a child up to maximize their utility uh, and, and, and to maximize their uh, human capital in uh, overall income. Their well, term income. Yeah. I might, I might have to disagree with you on that, but I think that's a, a hugely subjective um, thing. So I don't, I don't really want to delve into that. I'm, I'm sure many people have many different goals for what they want their children to be. But would you say that there is at least inherent value in cognitive capacity as well as, let's say, self-esteem? Um, so w- when we talk about this, are you, are you trying to put this into like how it, how childhood spanking and childhood rearing would go into the big five personality traits, like whether they're conscientious, agreeable, disagreeable, things of that nature. Is that what you're getting at? Because it's- Well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to say that spanking is correlated, or I guess in some studies would say even causes uh, uh, children to have lower cognitive ability by way of diminished gray matter in their brain, as well as... Uh, Reduce self-esteem. These are just the two studies that 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 I kind of pulled up right now, that examine specific uh, implications of spanking. I mean, w- you agree that those two things aren't necessarily a really great great thing to have. Right. You know, we want children to be smart. We want children to have self-esteem. True, but I, you know, again, I'm going to attack the veracity of the study, and I'm going to give you four solid reasons why you should, or three solid reasons why you should always attack the veracity of these studies. Right. So, one, the correlation fallacy: correlation or association between two variables do not prove causation. Correlations, especially misleading when evaluating actions chosen to correct disciplinary or medical problems, called corrective actions. Right. Two, the extrapolation fallacy. Even if infrequent spanking is correlated with better outcomes than overly frequent spanking, that does not prove that zero spanking is best. Three, the lumping fallacy. Only four of the 75 studies were limited to two open hand swaps to the buttocks for the child defiance. The other 71 studies lumped together all spanking regardless of how it was implemented and why it was used. Right? So so we have to we, we have to look at this. Uh, and like a legitimate analytical mind, we, we do not see good controls here, right? And it, when we talk about good controls, um, there, there's plenty of evidence to favor disciplinary actions, right? Uh, I'll, I'll list off some. Forehand and McMahon, uh, long-term studies are Baramind. Uh, so Baramind, Gurindal. Uh, I'm butchering these names, by the way, but I'll, I'll link both of these and, and the actual article that people can look at. Lazalier and Coombs, 2005 meta-analysis. Um, so there, there is plenty of data out there that says the opposite. So, I, I'm sorry. I, I just want to check out that last one, Lazalier and Coombs. Uh, can you look at uh, – here, I might be able to actually link it down below. If you if you don't mind, uh, actually I'm a, I'm a, here. Take it in. Uh, check your messenger. All right. Oh, this is the same one I looked at. Oh, uh, the goodparent.org? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, 
And uh, I'll, I'll also shoot you the link to the uh, the Gershoff. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a, a WordPress attack on the study as well. Well, we could turn this into who can post the most studies. Um, no, we don't need to. All right. Well, let, let's let's find a, let's find another another point of clash here. Let's try to uh, route this in, in things that we can uh, both agree on. Um, so let, let, let me put it this way: if there was a more effective way to control a child, um, which would what should the parent do? Should they spank, or should they use the more effective way? All, all other sort of, I guess, tertiary consequences aside. Okay. So let's say, let's say that there is a marginal benefit, a marginal benefit to not spanking the child and say timeout, right? Just, I, I don't actually find there to be a difference, but let's just say that they are closely related, but you get a little bit of advancement from putting your child in the corner for timeout. Should we use that? Even then, I would still say no. There is a benefit outside of just what you know. What's absolutely best here? Okay, so let me let me try to let me try to build this case a little bit better, right? So, spanking a child, as everyone knows, I'm a conservative, right? And uh, I think spanking a child leads a child to be a little bit more conservative and a little bit more in place with authoritarianism, which I, I do not, I think authoritarianism gone off and awry is bad, but I think having a child who can completely disregard uh, authoritarianism is, is not any better than a child uh, growing into be a fascist, right? So a communist or a narco-communist is no better than an anarcho-capitalist is no better than a fascist. At the end of the day, there has to be some central middle ground. And I think spanking a child can get that to evolve at a much better level. Now, in that scenario, I would not use spanking as my primary. Spanking would be the secondary or tertiary action that I wanted to use. How, how very Hobbesian of you. We, we must... We we'll spank for our instill uh, instill the authority into our our children. Um, well, first off, I agree that that children should have some respect for authority, particular particularly as you as as an adult, um, you are their authority, you are their guardian, um, and, and they should respect that on some level. Spe speaking of kids, disrespect. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, buddy, shut the door, please. Thank you. You see that? No, no spanking required. No, I'm playing. All right. Um, so let me see here. So it seems to me, right. So, um, we kind of have two different cases. So, so on, on one hand we have spanking where it's used on a child that is, doesn't have the ability to, um, doesn't have the cognitive capacity to, to, uh, understand language. So say like sub four year olds, four years old. So you're using spanking on a child that, that doesn't really necessarily fully understand why they're getting spanked because they, they don't really, they can't really rationalize the words that you're speaking to them. Um, and then greater than four years old, we have children that we could just as well um, use our words to, rationalize with them and if necessary we, we you still can have negative reinforcement children love things right my kid loves his ipad me taking that away from him for a period of time to me i found it is to be um just as effective or, or more effective than the threat of, of corporal punishment so that's kind of my point if there's a better way that isn't associated with these these negative uh, ramifications from all these sorts of studies that you know you can either accept or reject. Then that's what what you should do. 
He's not making my case for me right now. He's like literally opening the door. And... River, shut the door, or else you're getting spanked. <laughs> shut, shut the door, dude. Okay, so, all right. So let's try to unpack that, right? So that's that's a very that's a very broad stance, right? So let's take the idea of taking something away from a child, right? I'm going I'm to go off on my social justice warrior tangent here growing up as a poor kid. I didn't have anything to get taken away. I didn't even have food. What are you going to take away from me then? <laughs> You're going to make me starve more than I already am? I, I find that a hilarious action. Your, your uh, free time. I didn't have any. I was. <laughs> I had to work a job by the time I was 15. Uh, and even, and even at a younger age, I was still, you know, I had to mow the yard. I had to take care of my aunt. Uh, my, my father fell ill at around 13, 14 years old. You know, I was always busy as a child and I, I never had time to do a lot of bad stuff, which is probably why I didn't get in trouble. But, um, the thing is, is like at, at what point, especially coming from like, a, a, I think a privileged perspective. Some of these people do not have this, right? So if you go to the ghetto, where spanking is far more likely, right? Which which doesn't help the case for spanking, by the way. And I think it 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 skewers the numbers quite a bit. But if if you go to the ghetto, you're going to find a high level of people being spanked, and it's specifically because there's not a whole lot of other options that they have. I mean. What, what, what can you do if you don't have anything? What, what can you take away from your child? Are you going to make them stand in the corner? Well, that's not, that's not really effective. And, and then taking stuff away from them, it's, just, it's, it's not something you can do. So you have to have some secondary tertiary plan, and that's where I go back to spanking. It's not, spanking should not be the first choice. It shouldn't be like, oh, my child... My child was walking around with her cup and she spilled it, so I'm a spanker. That's, that, 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 you know, that's, right, that's, a, right. that's a dry idea. Spanking is like, so we're standing in line and uh, an eight-year-old is standing there and not listening to mom, no matter what the mom does, sits him down, rationalizes with him. He doesn't want to listen. He just wants to do what he wants. And there's an immediate problem that needs to be with, it, with immediacy. Just, just take, just taking your example because it has happened to me before. Um, I believe that the, the better thing to do would be to, to pull that child aside into the bathroom, into a private area, wherever, and address the child. It, again, depending on their age. So either we're we're trying to rationalize with the child and offer some ramifications, or if they're below if they don't if they lack that cognitive capacity well there's really not much you can do other than just like write it out you know if, if pick them up carry them <laughs> right I, I, I'm, I'm kind of talking like the terrible twos which i'm kind of going through right now with my, my middle one but I, the, the the generally um purported advice is is literally just don't reinforce it ignore it go on about your day now if the child is um of of an age where they do have some level of cognitive capacity. Well, well, that's where you reason with it. That's where you offer the, uh, the negative reinforcement. Um, and, and I would say that there's actually always something you can take away from a child, even, even if they're, they're impoverished. So children play with like, I don't know, rocks or like make dolls out of like straw, straw and stuff. You, you take that away from them, right? They, I mean, they're always going to find toys and stuff that they play with and enjoy. And I really, I really hate that I'm on camera right now talking about taking away a rock from from some <laughs> Zanzibar. Or something. But I mean, that's what you, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Um. Okay, the two year old point. Yeah, some people say ignore it. I'm going to be honest. My personal advice to people what to do is. Uh, talk to them. Two-year-olds aren't two-year-olds aren't stupid. They understand. I think Jordan Peterson said it best. You, you, you take a two-year-old. You know, you're at a family gathering. Your two-year-old's acting crazy. You take them and you set them aside and you put them down. And you said, "Hey, don't you come talk to me. Don't you do nothing with me. I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't like you right now." You sit down and you don't come back until you want to act like a big person. Now. 
you know as well as I do, a two-year-old, what do they want to be? I want to be bigger. Right. They want to accept more responsibility. So if you set them down, now, the, you can walk up to your two-year-old when they're in that mood. And you're like, hey, are you ready to come back? And they'll just, oh, no. And you can just, you know, but, but at that point in time, that's fine. But again, we're talking about, I'm, I'm specifically trying to stay away from the four and under just because that that's such a slippery slope of like what's proper, right? So if your child's reaching for a knife, do you pop their hand? Three-year-old. Well, I, I, would, I would move the knife. I'd kind of, I mean, just as my gut instinct picturing that situation in my head, I, I think I would, I would move the knife out of its, out of its reach. What's faster to get to the hand or get to the knife? I don't know. We're talking. We're talking in hypotheticals, I suppose. I, it's it's one, happened to me before. I mean, you, that, you, yeah, I, I, it depends on my position, the position of the knife, the position of the child. I mean, there's a lot of variables in there. Um, if but, so, but, if, if if it's if it's faster to reach for the hand, well, then yeah, I would grab his hand and make sure that he didn't uh, uh, grab the knife. Um, I'm not sure if I would pop the hand again because I don't. And I would say that that the science is with me. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily show to be effective in the long term. Well, it, I, I would stray away from saying that the science is with you because I, 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 I've shown a lot of problems with the studies. And I, I think people who, who watch this should just base this purely on the rhetoric between the two. Just don't go off in the studies unless you want to go and read the studies and they'll be linked below, but they are not absolute <laughs> and, and i say this in, sure. in all yeah. Yeah, that, that, um, I, I agree that that's fair <sighs> um so would you say that it's better to have your child listen to you out of out of their ability to reason their capacity to reason and out of respect for you um the fact that they want to please you or would, or would it be better for them to to do as you say out of out of fear out of fear of physical reprisal of those two, which do you think is the more, more valuable choice? I think you're building a false dichotomy because let's, let's say an abusive parent's a parent who uh, a child is most likely scared of, but you can discipline your child and pop your child and still not be considered abusive. Um, and, and there's many a cases of parents and, and children who the parent spanked them and the child was not afraid of them. It wasn't like a. Fe- it's not a fear tactic. I don't. I, I don't want people to think that you pop your child in the butt because you want them to fear you. You don't. It's not. It's not a fear based reaction. It is an immediate pain based reaction. Right. Pain stops you from doing stuff immediately. That is a fact. Um, for instance, in the army, what was the number one use of uh, training? What, what what happened if a if a soldier messed up what happened he which, got era, which, which era are we talking about oh well specifically when I was going on but um, I I think y'all felt plenty of pain for I guess you could say minor inconveniences to NCOs I feel like I felt like a lot of pain for a lot of dumb shit but <laughs> that's but, besides the point. So you don't, you don't think that that spanking instills fear in children? No. Okay, hold on one second. River, come here. River, come here real fast, real real fast, real real fast, real real fast. Come here, come here. Since since he wants to get in on the. Uh, on the debate so bad. Hey, look look right in that camera. Can you wave? I'm gonna spank you. All right, that's all I wanted to say. Now, did you, did you see the look in his face? Okay, hold on. Did, 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 what, 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 what reaction did he show? <laughs> you can go, buddy.
<laughs> I stole her away from her favorite show for this. Josie, 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 Josie. I'm right hey. here. Hey, look. Right here. <laughs> Can you hear me? I think you. Hey, check your mic, dude. I think you got unplugged. No, I think you're, uh, by the way, it reset the time. Okay. Nope. So, oh gosh, I'm not, no, it doesn't. The time's still going. Oh, well, I do. So as you okay. can tell, I could probably have hit that child about six times and she'd have looked at me like I was stupid. <laughs> I, you know, I was going to ask her what she thinks when, uh, before she gets spanked, I, I, you know, assuming that was all right with you or how spanking makes her feel. Cause I mean, I, I'm speculating, but I would be willing to wager that, that if you ask the child to, uh, to speak, what, what emotion gets conjured up uh, about spanking, I would say it's more than likely going to be fear. I still would say that that's a false dichotomy between fear and pain. Pain can breed fear, but pain is not fear. They are, they are non-synonymous terms that we have to agree with. Now, I think my child probably fears me more yelling than she does me hitting her, specifically because I don't. I don't it's, it's useless. She's two and a half, and she's mean as hell. She, I ripped her away from her favorite show, and she was willing to fist fight me. <laughs> but you don't think that it's fear of pain? No, but I mean they're they're at least correlated there, right? They can be, but that again, they're not. They are not the same. So again, so let's say you have fear, right? Fear, depending on how you can define it, is an irrational idea, right? But let's say, for instance, let's say my father was the primary uh, giver of pain at my household. I never feared my father. I was never scared of him. I was never like, oh, God, dad's coming home and he's going to beat my ass. No, it was never. It was like, oh, God, I did something stupid. It has consequences. <laughs> Regardless of what those consequences would have been, I feared the consequence, you could say, but it, I don't think necessarily fear is the right word. I think the, the right word was... Uh, conscious of my actions and knew that my actions were wrong and knew that I was going to have to, I guess you could say, repent. And one of the ways of repentance is through pain. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. Um, gosh. Hmm. Try to find, I'm trying to find some points of clash here. I don't know. It's hard. What do, what do you got for me? So, you say that it's you say a child should not be spanked at all. So you agree at no point in time a child should be spanked. What I'm saying is if there are other more effective methods, which I believe that there are, that they should be utilized. Therefore, there is no reason where a child should be spanked. Okay. So let's, let's go off a little bit on a tangent. So do you think – do you think – Forcing a child to exercise would be considered in the realm of spanking because it causes pain. No, because there's it, – it's an argument for – it's a consequentialist argument. Forcing a child to exercise within reason um, has positive consequences. Spanking, um, for whatever uh, positive consequences that there are, and I'm not – entirely sold on the fact that there are there is a more effective way that is uh less painful less harmful uh that could be utilized now let me ask you what if what if all of those studies that you tend to bias yourself on state that spanking was a good thing would you then change your mind 
Oh yeah, of course. I, I, I honestly do try to, to be informed as, as best as I can about um, what academics or, or what these pe- people that study this thing, so, these sort of things, if it was demonstrated to me that this was the best outcome for my child was, was to spank in a particular set of circumstances, then, then of course I would be, I'd be open to it. Okay. So it's, it's not a, so your argument is not from principle that spanking a child is wrong. Your argument is that it's wrong specifically because there are better options. Well, even backing, backing that up. So I, I remember talking about how, um, uh, trying to figure out what, what was abusive and what's not abusive. So it seems to me that what makes spanking not abusive in the eyes of the spanker is the fact that it, it, uh, it has positive outcomes, right? Um, but, but no, no, I, I, I guess, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a utilitarian, right? So, so yeah, I, I don't have any, any sort of, to, to, to give you a simple an- answer to your question, I do not have any sort of deontological principle that I'm, I'm adhering to. I'm, I'm arguing from consequentialism, from hedonistic utilitarianism. Right. So, okay. So that goes, that, that goes to my point. So when, when you make a statement, children should not be spanked, do you have enough information to state that all children should not be spanked? Do you think that there's a gap of, do you think there's a gap of knowledge there that might be that, science or you might not you uh, recognize and then yeah so so the the question is an absolute and i don't and i try not to deal in absolutes so i i do withhold the possibility that there could be some instance um where some child somewhere that spanking could be the best possible outcome i i don't think that that's an impossibility no okay so now if <laughs> we'll make some. We'll take a modal logic jump here. If that's the case, oh gosh, <laughs> right? You already know it. You already know the answer to that. If if if, then why not? What? Well, yeah, and and I'm talking about I'm talking about routine spanking, right? So spanking in the aggregate, spanking on on the average. I I can't speak to every single ridiculous set of circumstances somewhere. Um. You know, I would be open to see such circumstances where spanking would would lead to the best possible outcome, um, demonstrably. Um, I have failed to see that demonstrated to me thus far. But again, I withhold the possibility that that such a uh, such an outcome or such a situation could could exist. Well, back to the evidence that I gave you. The, the evidence that I gave you stated that there was positive outcomes in child being in children being spanked. Mm-hmm. So would that evidence be enough to persuade you to move from your position? Well, no, because I have my own evidence and I don't know, we can see you can copy and paste more sources. Right, but but you but you're missing what I'm saying. So if you're, if you're basing it off a consequentialist so now you're just picking a side of evidence that you choose to go along with rather than rather than coming to an actual conclusion. You're just going, well, this research already confirms what I think to be true. Therefore, I'm going to I'm going to go with it. That's confirmation bias. That's what I'm talking about. Well, we have to look at, at the body of evidence. And um, so I'm, I'm no uh, statistician, so I can't. F- throw out fancy words like, I don't know, whatever you're talking about in the first 10 minutes of the debate. What I'm looking at is, is what are the stances of the major uh, associations that uh, deal with this sort of stuff? Um, the American Pediatric Association, the American Psychological Association. Um, what, what is the evidence that they're basing that off of? Uh, what seems to be the consensus among, among psychologists? And, th- and that's where I'm drawing my conclusion from. Well, I, I would say about that American Pediatric Society, uh, the American College of Pediatricians are the ones who wrote that research on disciplinary spanking is misleading that I linked to you. The American College of Pediatrics? Pediatricians. Okay. In January 2017, it was an attack on that uh, Gershoff and uh, Grogan Kaler case. Uh-huh. So I'm not familiar with them. I... Uh... Well, I'm just saying there are. There I are, had to look at the American Pediatrics Association. 
Um, I've never even heard of the American College of uh, Pediatrics, but hey, I'm sure they exist. I don't, I don't know if they're reputable or not, but uh, I think the, the more, I guess, mainstream one, to me at least, in my experience, is the American Pediatrics Association. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, American Academy of Academy of Pediatrics. Yeah, that's what I meant. So here's so here's their stance. The American Academy of Pediatrics strongly opposes striking a child for any reason. Spanking is never recommended. Infants may be physically harmed by a parent who strikes a child, uh, so on and so forth. But but that's their stance. Well, they also have stood against others. Uh, opposed this guidance last night by the Department of Justice and Education that eliminates protections for transgender youth in public schools, no longer allowing them to use restrooms quarter, corresponding to their gender identity. Do you also agree with that stance the, uh, as a side? I'm sorry, you, you spoke kind of fast there. So the American, um, the American Associates, so the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with a transgender stance. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, that they should be supported, nurtured, and cared for, whether in their homes, in their schools, or policies enacted by the state and federal levels. They openly disagreed with uh, the, the, the transgender policy, which is something that other pediatric associations have stated uh, that is that should be considered child abuse for uh, parents to. Uh, talk to the children about transgenderism. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, honestly, I I don't know. I'd have to delve more into the issue, but just taking it at face value because I'm I'm not I'm not saying that I believe that spanking is wrong just because you know the AAP says it's wrong, but I'm saying that that's one sort of uh, I guess line in my web of of reasoning. But in that sort of unrelated issue, I I have no idea. I mean, you're you're kind of throwing me a curveball there. I would, I would have to go and, and, and actually look at their reasoning and look at look at what they're trying to say. What I'm saying is is that we you have to take a principled stance. I agree. But at what point in time does your principled stance overcome what could possibly be the better, more rational solution? Right. Because like I said, you're 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 going off and, and you're you're taking these studies and you're taking them as 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 not necessarily absolute but as as more viable than the ones that I've given you, right? And they're both by prominent. All of these studies are all by prominent psychologists. It's not like th there is a great divide. I don't know if it's 50-50, but I don't necessarily think that it has to be 50-50. I think if there's, if there's a 20 or 30% uh, slide, I, I, I don't think that it's something that you could base an ideology, and I don't think it's something you could base a blanket statement that children should not be spanked. That's my point, is that I, I find that there's confirmation bias in your consequentialist argument, and if you release that, that confirmation bias, you would be more open and more understanding to the other position, and by doing so, as a consequentialist, I don't think you would yourself bring it in, because I just don't see you as that type of person regardless. But I think you would be more in line with understanding why other parents do. No, I, I, I'm i not trying to make the argument that, that people are abusers I, because they spank. I believe that they do this with, with the right intentions. What I'm trying to say is that if you actually really break it down, there's not much of a distinction between abuse and spanking, other than the fact that it leads to a positive outcome. Now, the evidence that I've seen, and you know, you you've got your cited sources. I've got my cited sources. I believe mine's greater, um, and I believe that the the stances of Ameri uh, leading uh, associations that that study this sort of thing are aligned with mine. That that's the conclusion they draw, so that's who I'm gonna uh, defer to. I'll leave you with the last twenty. Okay, last twenty seconds. Yeah. Oh wow. So anyway, I just want everybody to know that the veracity of the evidence here is in question. That it's not something that should be taken as an absolute. Secondly, that the the, the affirmative is basing themselves specifically on their own confirmation bias, where they're trying to negate the veracity of other evidence without actually knowing how.